Well, we've had a Formula One world champion, Nico Rosberg, set the record. We've had many players here at the Racket Stringing Challenge. Never before have we had an umpire, especially not of silver chair umpire class. Richard Haig, a proud Yorkshireman. He's coming under real pressure here. Almost as much pressure as when he umpired two major finals here. Mixed doubles in 2012, ladies doubles 2014. Uh, Lucien, what's your assessment so far? Move, move, move. Okay. And that, that's the next one. Hey, it's in, it shows like he has trying before. No, no. Look, no. look, 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 look. With oh, the, this pressure. movement, the, this is this is a string. This well, there's there's a lot of experience it's already, here. It's already part of the the, the club. I tell you what, being on centre court is a lot less pressure than this. <laughs> well, he's he's worked on two Olympic Games. He's done the Commonwealth Games in Delhi. We're ticking along to 54 seconds here. Rosberg's time is fast approaching. A man who lives locally in Wimbledon, travels the world. He's dedicated his whole life to officiating world-class tennis. This is close. This is a great performance. 106.57. Rather appropriately for a silver chair umpire, it is the silver medal behind Nico Rosberg. Let's have a round of applause for that. Richard, you were a very good sport there. And I tell you what, Rosberg was determined to win. So second place is not bad. Well, I'll take second place to an F1 champion. Um, yeah, I mean, he's fast at everything. So I'm not surprised he's competitive as well. You probably don't have too much time to, to think about the, you know, the technical variants of, uh, of tennis because you've got a, a pretty big job to do up there uh, in the chair. What, what a privileged position, but what a position of pressure as well at times. Yeah, it can be. Obviously, we umpire a lot of matches every year and it's, um, it's a lot of pressure. When you go out there on centre court, you've got 15,000 people in the stadium. It is a lot of pressure, but we're experienced. We do a lot of tournaments every year, so we're, we're used to that and you kind of forget the pressure once you're out there and you just umpire the match. You've covered two Olympic Games. Uh, it's hard to believe, really, isn't it, that London was seven years ago. What, what was that like? It must have been so special from your unique perspective. Yeah, it was great. It's always great to be involved in the Olympic Games and with Tokyo around the corner. Thinking back to London, it does seem like a long time ago now. And I think we're still seeing the legacy of the of the games in London, especially, which is fantastic. What are your memories of the two finals you've ever seen here in 2012 and 2014, mixed doubles and ladies doubles, respectively? Yeah, both great matches. The ladies doubles especially was when uh, Roberta Vinci and uh, Sarah Rani completed the Grand Slam of, of titles. So they won all four Grand Slams with that victory in, in Wimbledon, which was great. And does it get tiring when you're sitting up there, especially if it's very hot? Because the level of concentration you require is immense because of the prize for the players, not only in the final, in any round, at any event, because They've trained for, for hours and hours and hours and, and you guys have to get it right. We do. That's the job, I guess. That's, that's where the pressure comes from. And as an official, and I guess it's in any sport, you try and be 100% accurate. And we have now Hawkeye to help us with that, which is great. But, um, yeah, I mean, you, you know the players are out there really <laughs> fighting for points and for prize money. And the prize money is increasing a lot, so the pressure is there. Um, you don't you don't think about that when you're in the match. You're just trying to make the, the right calls and you're trying to let the match flow and go smoothly at the same time. And how do you handle it when someone gets a, a little bit lippy? Well, it happens sometimes. There's a few players out there that can be uh, tough to handle, but it's part of the job, you know. Then they're, they're not personal. It's not a personal attack on an umpire. It's, it's just because they are, like we said, fighting for points and prize money, which is understandable. I'd be the same. If I was playing, I'd be throwing my racket down, you know, screaming and shouting at the umpire, I'm sure. So I kind of get where they're coming from and, and you try not to lose too much sleep about it. Well, bearing in mind, you've, you've covered two major finals here. You've worked at all four slams, Commonwealth Games in Delhi. I was there. That was nuts as well in uh, 2010. Yeah. Two Olympic Games. Um, does any particular match or moment uh, stick in your mind? Something that, that, that you'll tell the grandchildren about all those years down the line? Well, I was a line part of the 2008 final between Roger and Rafa here, which was fantastic. You know, finishing at 9.30 at night in the dark. Uh, great tennis. I mean, just unbelievable high level of tennis, especially from Roger to, to get back in the, in the tie breaks in the third and fourth sets. 
Um, so that lives long in the memory. Um, you know, any time you walk out and do a final here in the chairs, it is a great feeling on centre court. It's a special court, it's a special atmosphere. Uh, but also even ex uh, exhibition matches. You know, I did a match at the Queen's Club uh, for Ross Hutchins' uh, charity uh, after he was diagnosed. And that was, that was fantastic. You know, you had John Jonathan Ross, Boris Johnson, um, Michael McIntyre, Richard Branson. So that was a fun experience. So you have the fun matches and then you have the serious stuff as well, which is a great balance. Well, a great life, and uh, hopefully you'll have many more big finals to come at Wimbledon. Thanks for your time, and well done on racket stringing a silver medal. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it.